Hello, everybody. I've never taught in a school. I teach at university. Oh, shit, oh, shit. yes. <laughs> right, can we begin? Sorry, we're late, and I apologise that you've been kept waiting. We're late because you've got here some of the most extraordinary things that have ever been found in England. You may have seen it. This is the hoard of Anglo-Saxon jewellery that was found in Staffordshire, here right in the middle of England, just outside Lichfield, just off the A5, um, a couple of years ago, by a metal detectorist wandering around in a field, waving a metal detector. And he came up with a fragment of this, and they finally found 1,500 pieces of Anglo-Saxon gold. You were all here, I'm told, because you failed. Oh, That's right. to say, no, you didn't get the magic five GCSEs, okay, right, the magic five. Now, what seems to me to be important is that you remember why you're here and why schooling exists and why human beings go to school. You've got a mind, you've got a brain. It's the most important thing about you. What you should be using your brains to do is two things. One of them is to master the world. If you do not use your brains, you will be at the bottom of the social pile, you will never go anywhere, and once you get outside the classroom where people are nice and gentle to you, you will be told what to do, right? What we're trying to get you to do is to take control of yourselves and to take control of your lives, right? That is what learning is about. And it's very simple. Why do, we, why do we bother studying history at all? Jake, where are you? To see what happened in the past. Yeah, why does that matter? <laughs> huh? why, why, why does what happened in the past matter? Because it has an effect on our life today. Yes, it does. I mean, how old are you? 16. Right. You have lived for 16 years. What percentage is that of the last thousand years? 1.6, <laughs> right. In other words, what is your experience against all those earlier human generations? Do you see what I mean? What is your experience? You are being given a unique opportunity to learn again. To do, so do you really want your life to be without purpose? What is your ambition? What do you want to be? I'm not sure at the moment. What? You're not sure? No. Right. Wouldn't it be a good idea, in that case, to open up as many opportunities as possible? If you don't know what you want to do, make it possible for you to do things. Remember, this is a world that's tough. We're in the middle of an economic crisis. Opportunities are closing down. To get good jobs is going to be harder and harder and harder. And the basic rule of a good job is where you tell other people what to do, rather than other people telling you what to do, where you're in charge. And what I want to do with you, for me, right, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I was born in the council house. My mother scrubbed floors. And my father was a turner. That's to say, he um, manufactured parts of commercial washing machines, right? He was out of work for seven years before the marriage. He walked twice to London in search of work. Now, we've forgotten those days. There was no full dough. To save, when he had a problem with his teeth, to save the equivalent of 12 and a half pence, he had his teeth, which was the cost of an anaesthetic, he had his teeth removed, all of them, without anaesthetic. Mm. Right? Now, that is not all that long ago. That is in the night, that's about 1930, right? That is only 80 years ago, my father's lifetime. Now, that is a world that could come back. That was a world that I was determined to escape. It could. Look what's happening to the National Health Service. Drugs are expensive. I mean, medical ones. Uh, <laughs> the, I grew up with that as my background, okay? I'm not, I sound as though I went to public school, you know, and all that, went to Cambridge, but that was, yeah? Yeah, but why'd you sound like that then? 
Because actually it made life easier. What if you it, 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 it makes life easier. Doors. Yeah, you can't like go for a job interview. Doors and open. Like, if, darling, yeah, exactly. You can't do that. The door shuts. But that's how, the, that's how some people are. The, 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 yeah, but but it, it, come on. So I'm not saying you've all got to change accents. That was simply how it was then. Okay, that was how the world worked. When you went to a grammar school, which I did, you were encouraged to talk proper. And very useful it is too. You're all going to be doing Latin. You're going to learn grammar. You're going to learn about the structure of language. It's a very, very good thing. Does that mean we're going to come out talking like you? I hope not. It'll take... I'm not saying it was, it's bad. It'll I take you... No, no, Mary doesn't talk like me. We all have different accents. You asked me a question, why my accent changed, right? I tried to give you an answer. And also in those days, remember, Mary will tell you also, accents change. Uh, M um, your Latin teacher, Mary Beard, right? <laughs> Profes Professor Beard, if you want her formal, formal title at Cambridge, um, also at Cambridge. But like, accents change. If you listen to recordings of the 1930s, you'll see male voices are very, very much higher. They're nearly all falsetto. The Victorians were the ones who introduced the business of H. You know how difficult it is with H's. Do words really uh, have, you, do you really have to say hotel? and so on. That's only Victorian. In other words, only the 19th century. So, so language changes. But for me, education was the way out of that experience for my father and my mother. I wanted to get out. I lived in a boring little northern town, right? But the one magic was the school hall. And there, there were honours boards of people who got out. And I spent my time in school looking at those and thinking how I could get out. That's all that's, you know, you may not be interested, you may be content with what you are, you may not want to change, that's fine. No? How did it's you get out then? By doing very well at school. Did you do well? well? Not everybody's a school person though. No, that is also true, there are people like Jamie. But on the whole, it's easier if you make the effort, right? This is the easy path, right? School is the easy path. School is the easy way forward, okay? Yeah, for some people it is. Like some people that are actually good at doing like, work and that, that other people can't. Are good with their hands, other people, other people that's will be good. That's the thing, with... like we have our exams and stuff and that's all on the written stuff. I agree. We get the opportunity to show what we can actually do. I agree. No, I think, sorry, I am not, just one second, I'm not defending the existing system. What I'm trying to say is, for one moment now, trust me, you don't know me, why should you? But trust me, and let's see between us, if we can't find something that's interesting and exciting, you may not, you know, you may want to do science, you may want to do uh, Jamie's cooking, uh, you may want to do Simon's acting, that's up to you. But let's all trust, let's all see where we might actually go, okay? So, that's, that's sort of the beginning. The reason for history is... Every single thing you say, every word you use, every piece of... Why are you wearing ties, these funny ties? You, do, you, cer you, certainly, you certainly don't want to wear them. But oh, the, I do. Oh, you do. Right, so that's fine. The, the girls want to wear ties and probably the boys don't. It's, these are bits and pieces of early 19th century dress. Why are you all wearing the suit, these, these jackets? Because men do. Do you know what they are originally? This is originally hunting dress. It's rough, it's rough external wear. If you look at what an 18th century gentleman is wearing, it's silks and satins. You can't actually go out in it. And this marks one of the great changes in human behaviour when dress changes to something that's practical, that you can move in, and that it also becomes, interestingly, business attire. What you were talking about job interviews, right? what you have to wear, the so-called smart thing. Again, it comes in at a particular moment of time. But history is about that accumulated experience. Every single thing you're going to study, cooking, theatre, science, Latin, it's all history. It's all previous human experience. Language, words, you didn't invent them. Yeah, it's like the saying of thou and that. Indeed. In Shakespeare. It which is what? That, which is historic. Okay, uh, so go, go through it. it. Like, most of us don't understand what, it. What, 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 do you, what did you use thou for? 
What do we say Did now? I what no? I what do we myself. say now? What do we say now? No. no. What is the what is the word that we what is the word I. that we the, the, you the word that we use for thou is you. That is what is called the polite form. Thou is just addressing one person. So normally if I in, in the 16th century, right? If I'd been talking to all of you, I'd have said all of you. If I'd addressed myself to you, I would have said thou. Thou must, you know, thou must learn, thou tiresome girl, or whatever, you know, or you know, thou art beautiful. Oh well, thanks. Well, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Come on, we've we've all got to recognise each other's talents. So all language, everything we think, is from the past. What you've got to do is to master it so that you can do something new with it. Okay? All change depends on knowing about what's happened before and doing something interesting with it. That's why it's worth you know, going to school if you can. That's why if you don't go to school and you become an apprentice, you again learn about, if you learn about wood carving. Okay? You, one of you was interested in claiming that, that if, you, if you don't want to study, if you don't want books, if you want to do something different, if you want to become a stone carver, if you want to become a wood carver, you need to know about the material. Even if you become a bricky, a good bricky knows about the material, knows how to put them together, will go and look at how it's been done before. You see what I'm trying to get at? It's tr what you're trying to do is to bring, build into yourselves previous experience. So, much too much introduction, but anyway, there we are. Let's try now and look at what I'm going to be trying to do with you in the classes. I'm going to try really, have any of you read any novels? Has anybody ever heard? Yeah? I read um, Of Mice and Men and To Kill a Mockingbird. Mm. Ah, great. Has anybody ever heard of Brave New World by Aldous Huxley? No. No. Can I suggest that if any of you try looking at it, it's a brilliant novel, uh, and what it tries to do is to look at the world we are in now, with easy sex, with complete use of drugs, with uh, a luxurious lifestyle where just everything is given to us, right? And it compares that with the world before, that world that I was talking about with my father, that world, of course, of every human generation before ours. You don't know how lucky you are, right? Until the last 30 or 40 years, most... I mean, how, if you'd been born 100 years ago, how long would you have lived? About two days. Uh, well, that, that, that indeed, but de, de, no, no de, de, death. If you'd if you'd survived, if, pardon, thirties, forty actually, but very good. No, in, in other words, what's happened to life expectancy in the last hundred years? It's doubled. Doubled. It's doubled. Well, where people now live regularly, you are likely to live until you're eighty. Right? Eighty. That's the norm. The normal age, and for women it will be. For women, I mean, God help us all. But 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 for women it will actually be longer. So there is this extraordinary change from the world then to the world now. And what I'd just like to try to do is to see if we can get into that, right? And what we've done is to take the very beginnings of the world then, our world. Once upon a time. Everybody here spoke Latin. What does the world word Britain come from? Britannia. Britannia. Sorry? Britannia. Britannia, great. It comes from the Latin. It's the Latin word for these, in fact, it's Greek in the originally, but it's the Latin word for these islands. And originally, Britannia. And originally, all of this, Spain, France, Italy, uh, Switzerland, most of Germany, the Netherlands, the whole of this area here of the Balkans, Greece right round into Asia and the whole of the Mediterranean basin, all of this was a single empire ruled from where? Britain. No. 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 Ruled from Lat Latin is the language of, of, of which civilization? Rome. <laughs> Rome. It's Roman. So it's ruled, from, it's ruled from Rome. And Britain is conquered by the Romans. It's one of the last bits of this great empire to be conquered 
by the Romans. And the Roman Empire lasts for about 400 years, twice as long as the British Empire in the West. How did the Roman Empire fall? How did it fall? It fell because people who were better fighters came over from here, um, <laughs> from, from Germany and from... The and from Germans? Right, the Germans are very good fighters, as we nearly found out in the last war. And what happened was the, the Romans became very comfortable. They had luxurious civilization. They were rich. They got bored with fighting. And so what they started doing is what we do. You go, first of all, to the lower classes to fight on your behalf, which is why the squad is, you know, are the lads from the council estate, right? They'll go out and die for the rest, comfortable people like me. No, no, but that's what they are. It's true, isn't it? And then even they stopped doing it. So you then imported these so-called barbarians, the people, from the, which is what the, the Romans call them. That's the origin of the word barbarian. They imported them to do their fighting on their behalf. What's that, paid, and you know, pardon? Paid for those. Were they paid, people to go? Yes, they were paid. They were, they were, of course, paid. They were paid enormous amounts of money. And they again started to take over the Roman army. And then, surprisingly, not surprisingly, they look at this luxurious lifestyle and they think, why don't we take it for ourselves? And what we've got now here are the remains of that invading people. This is part of the top of the sword. How do you know it was a sword, though? because we've got other examples which actually show them all together. So we know this is part of a sword, and um, we've got here um, a thing that actually you suspended your sword from at a belt, and this is a piece of decoration, again, from a sword, and this very, very beautiful thing here, which I can't touch, uh, it's so valuable, is from a shield. Are we a bit surprised of swords covered in gold? Yeah, because obviously you're like savage. That must be worth a lot of money. Why, 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 why do you want right? Why, well, I reckon, why I reckon back then they didn't know the true value of gold. Like no, how we no, it's as, it it's, as, it's as valuable. In fact, it's probably more valuable than it is now. Would it not be that, that the people who are high up in like the army and that who have got gold coats? That's right. These these are the rich. These are the nobles. But if we found, imagine now we found a hoard of jewels. I mean they're. People quite often hide them. Why would you hide something really, really valuable? So no one can steal it from you. That someone will take it, that someone will steal it. In other words, that the world is very, very insecure. That people, people will steal it from you. Okay. All these jewels here that I mentioned, who would have worn them? Men. Yeah, that's brilliant. In other words, what's happened about the roles of men and it's women? It's all changed. It's enormously it's changed. Gone the way. So this then is purely male jewellery, okay? Which group of men nowadays regularly wear very, very large quantities Rappers. of male... Great. And I brought some along. Oh, well, so they... along. Oh, yeah. You got some bling. I got you some bling. This stuff here, <laughs> the, the usual tasteful diamond-edged uh, watch, there you are, that's right. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, the sort of li little discreet, little discreet medallion um, uh, and so on. So, we're suddenly realising that although these people that made this stuff and wore it 1,300 years ago, they've got something strongly in common with some groups now. Carry on. Uh, it's all, no, I'm just saying, it's, all, it's still, even though it's all changing, that the men and the women, it's all evolved around people who've got money, innit? Because, like, obviously, everyone, everyone's got them and that. Everyone, like, might have a necklace and that. But when you see the people like, on the telly and that, they've got bare, massive, like, it's got bare money. So it's obviously... It is the money. People... And, in fact, you're quite right. History, more or less, inevitably, is about people with money. Yeah. Because they're the ones who can build... You know what I said this earlier? The whole world revolves around money. Of course it does. But you want to be in a position where you control money rather than somebody who is struggling to earn it, OK? And they felt exactly the same. They got it at the point of a sword with this absolutely wonderful golden hilt showing you. Now, we've talked about rap. We've talked about gangster bling. Listen to the actual language. <laughs> Can't you turn it up a bit? Yeah, turn okay, turn it up a bit. Okay. 
Right. Great. Now, now, can we just hear? Does anybody know that one? Could anybody recite any of the words? Yeah. 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 Right. Straight out of Compton, crazy motherfucker named Ice Cube from the yeah. game called Niggas with an Attitude. When I'm called off, I got sword off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Squeeze the trigger and the bodies are hauled off. You two boy, if you fuck with me. Oh, yo, fuck with me. These are going to have to come and get me. So what is this? What is this music? What is this rap glorifying? Violent. Always by men. We heard the rap. We've seen the jewellery, which is so similar to this stuff. Let's listen to what a king actually says at the time that we're looking at here. And it is, in fact, identical to the rap. This is a king of Norway boasting of the number of people that he's killed. Now, I have caused the deaths of 13 of my enemies. I kill without compunction, and I remember all my killings. Do you see what I mean? This is a king. In other words, if we go back to the beginnings of Britain, go back to the beginnings of England, you were telling me that these are all important, rich people who could afford this stuff. What I'm trying to say to you is their values are exactly the same as a, as a teenage rapper. These are the values of male violence. These are the values of the domination of women. These are the values of territory, of conflict, of, as it were, mutual destruction. And that is a world that's still there, just underneath the surface. But what's very interesting here, finally, is there's something that doesn't belong to this world. This is rather different from the rest of them. This is not male bling. This is part of a Christian cross that was probably carried into battle. Christianity is something rather odd. We've been talking about a society in which killing is good, in which people become rich important just as you do in the gangster world by killing but what does christianity say about killing anybody Let's see this thou, shalt shalt not kill. Kill. thou shalt not kill that's the old testament in the new testament it's those who live by the sword hang on in christianity there's the world of the new testament the world of the old testament and the new are different these people here just a second, these people here who had this warrior bling, they worship their own gods. And you know what I was telling you about language having our history in it? What does Wednesday mean? It's Woden is the god of war, who is the hero of all of these people. He is the master god. This world that I am talking about is still in our language. It's still in our behavior. It's, but whereas then this was all regarded as good, most people now regard it as bad. This is what the lines on the cross say. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered, let them that hate him flee before him. It's a war verse from the Old Testament. The values of the Old Testament are these warrior values. They are the values of violence, they're the values of territory, they're the values of a God who says, you are my chosen people and I will fight for you. And something very, very different happens with the world of the New Testament. It's completely different. And what we'll do next week is to try to look at that revolution in values, how it changes, why it changes, and why even though you don't know it, you have these ideas inside you. Thank you.